Hey everybody, it's Angel from Halo Inspirations. We give you inspirations to help you spread beauty and joy through your quilting journey. Happy Wednesday to each of you and happy Christmas Wednesday. Yes, I'm bringing y'all another inspiration for you. It is these adorable hexy ornaments that you can make for Christmas. Now they are hand stitched, just a fair warning. And I gotta tell you, I am by no means anywhere near being a fantabulous hand stitcher. It's one of my weaknesses, but that just says that you can make these too and absolutely love the results, whether they're gifts for somebody or for yourself or for your tree. But let's go ahead and get this started. Okay, so let's talk about a few of the supplies that you may want or that you absolutely need. So. Of course, with Hexies, a few English paper piece, you'll know you'll need some templates. I just use index cards or any kind of uh, cardstock, maybe from an advertisement. And I also use the die cut. I have two of them that I bought from Joann's many, many moons ago. And I just basically cut out my hexes. Now these are three quarter inch. They're the smaller ones. It's the only thing I've used them for is <laughs> I haven't made a quilt with those tiny things. So you can use different sizes, but to get that size that I showed you earlier, those were the three quarter and you'll need 12 total for each side. So 12 of these, you'll need some fabric. Now I would encourage you to look at your print. These are small hexagons. So if you had a really large print, it's not gonna show inside of these. What's really neat though, you can still fussy cut. And for those of you who are so new and don't know what fussy cutting is, it's basically taking something that you would want in the fabric. So if I wanted this snowflake, I would place this right on top and I would cut around it. Okay, that way I know that that is what I'm going to get inside of my hexi. But this one, there's no fussy cut and I'm just gonna cut it all up, but they're small enough that you're gonna be able to see them inside these hexes, okay? So if you had a great big uh, print with like really cute red trucks for Christmas, it ain't gonna show up as a red truck. It's gonna show up as red, right? So just be cognitive of that. These are the two fabrics that I'm gonna demo with. You also wanna try and match your thread. This is more of a off-white or white, and so I generally would use uh, an off-white or a even a light, light beige would work. Um, yes, you'll see them on occasion when I hit the red and green, but that's the majority of the color. Uh, and, and of course, if both sides are different colors, if you've got one solid red, one solid green, I would just pick one of them. I am going to demo with this uh, copper brown so that you can see some of the stitches and what that does. Uh, so you need the fabric, you need the templates. Uh, it, you can, as far as templates go, you can pre-package them. You don't have to make them. They come in various sizes. So you could pre-package a whole bundle of them. They sell them like that. They also have like acrylic, pla uh, uh, yeah, acrylic, like your rulers are made out of, they have them in different sizes for hexes. And what's really neat about that is if you're going to fussy cut, you can see straight through it. So you know exactly what you're getting inside. But I just use my die cuts with my index cards, but I wanted to talk about that a little bit. You will need scissors. Notice I don't have a rotary blade. I don't use a rotary blade. Now, if you had the templates, the acrylic template, yeah, then you might want to use a, a a rotary blade with your self-healing mat, but I just cut mine and I ain't caring if it's the exact shape or not. It's not worth the time. You'll see that here in a little bit, but so I use fabric scissors. You'll definitely need some ribbon so you can hang it. If you're interested, you might want some polyfill. We'll, I'll show about that later. Maybe a little bit of uh, decoration, whether it's a bow, a star, a snowflake, it doesn't matter, but I'm gonna use this cute little bow. And I'm going to actually glue baste my hexagon. So 
that is definitely um, on the list. And because my older videos on how to do hexes, I thread basted. That's another option. If you don't have the glue, you can thread baste. I will throw a link up for that older video and you can see how to thread baste. Uh, but I'm going to, I am all about this uh, sew line glue. So that's, I'm going to demonstrate how I um, actually baste it with the glue in this video. And um, if you might, it's not necessary, you've got a pretty op big opening, but if you want to be able to stuff a little bit in your polyfill, you might want to, something to stuff it with, but it's not necessary. And that is it. Fabric, template, thread, oh, a needle. <laughs> Needles are always good. And the needle that I'm going to be using, which you'll see later, it's, I try to find the thinnest needle. If you have a thick needle, it'll leave a bigger hole. So the thinner the needle, the better. Uh, and then that it's got some strength so it doesn't bend very quickly. So thread, needle, fabric, templates. Uh, if you're using glue to baste, you'll need the glue. If you're using polyfill, you'll need polyfill and just a little decorations. So uh, yeah, I think that's it. Let's go ahead and get this started. Okay, after you get them all cut up, and like you see, it doesn't matter if they're straight or not. You, If you were doing this and you were going to put these things into a quilt, I would definitely do a little more than a quarter inch so that you have something to grab onto. Um, three eighths works real nice. Half an inch is a little big, but it works real nice to be three eighths. But this is going in an ornament, so it really truly doesn't matter. You still want a little more than a quarter inch if you can but after you get them all cut up you're going to take your glue pen you're going to go across the paper and on either side okay now i am pushing up onto it i'm not pulling it down i'm not pulling it over i'm pushing up and the reason is is it'll give you a nice straight line and I'll show you here in a minute and then you just continue to go across now with that this is with the um, sew line glue pen and it's not Sue Daly's hers is pink which is in our shop if you're interested I just bought this before we were stocking them to try it and it was blue but it works great and if you notice my end didn't stay down so I just put a little bit more glue down and you're just going to go all the way across and get these folded on Oop, stuck to my finger now notice I'm always putting the cap back on this is a temporary glue that dries very quickly and if the cap isn't on or if it's off too long it will dry out the pen so I don't want to do that so it's a good habit if you can remember to put the cap on in between and this is you know to sit here and glue takes a little bit of time but it's definitely something you can do while you listen to your favorite podcast or your YouTube channel that you like to listen to, or uh, audiobook, or even watch television because it doesn't require a whole lot of thinking. Nice relaxing. Now the one really cool thing about this, I will tell you, if you are doing this inside of a quilt, you're going to want to take the paper out. If the paper's hard to get out, that means you use too much glue. If in fact your um, fabric isn't staying put that means you didn't use enough there's a fine line and I use just a little bit more than what I write with it's just a tiny bit more pressure and that's all it really needs but this paper for the ornaments they're gonna stay in so that really doesn't matter either but as you can see by pushing I've got really nice straight lines and they fit perfectly because of it okay so I'm gonna do one more because I needed six I had to count real quick 
<laughs> and then I'll show you the next step. So again, go across the paper and on either side. And I should have done it this way, but it's okay. All right, next side. I probably need a little bit more Whoop, over here. All right, push it, whoop, push it up. Really doesn't take too much time if you're not doing a whole bunch. And that's one of the things I like about these ornaments. Although I'm not a big hand stitcher, and you'll see in a little bit, but um, I don't do it enough. But this is a really easy project that doesn't take too much time. Okay, almost done with that. Okay, Whoop. keep sticking to my fingers. And last but not least, right here in the middle, this is our last one. Get it up there. All right. Now, like I said, you need six of them. And this is why. This is what will make our wreath. Six of these. We leave the hole in the center. And you'll need to make two of these. <clears throat> a front and a back. Now, just so y'all could see, remember I told you you want to try and match the thread. This is the one that I did with the burgundy that I'm going to do with you. So you can see the stitches a little bit. It doesn't bother me actually because it's <laughs> pretty darn close to the, the snowflake color. Oh, it's not burgundy. It's copper brown. Excuse me. Um, but you can see them and we're they're going to be pushed out a little bit. So you're going to see them even more. But I wanted you to be able to see that. And this one I used a very light beige color. And they're hidden a little bit better. So that is why you want to try and match your threads. And the holes are tiny because I used a thin needle. Okay. I wanted to use a self-threading needle. So this is the thinnest self-threading needle, self needle I have. So that's the one I'm going to use. This is a um, copper brown thread so you can see exactly what I'm doing. I'm first going to do a quilter's knot. And I have a video, an older video, that shows exactly how to do it. And I like a little bit of a bigger knot for this just so it secures. There is my quilters and um, not and yeah it is pretty big but I didn't want it to go through so what's really important is to remember which side that you're going to sew I have picked these up and when you put the right sides together what can happen is you can forget I have done this side and if I sew that side then it's going to go like this and that doesn't form a circle right so you put your right sides together. If you're going to put this down for any length of time, what I like to do is I use a clip or a pin, and that way I know when I pick it back up that I don't have to rethink about it, that I'm actually gonna to remember to sew on that side. But just a little tip. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to go into that corner. Okay, and you want to come out the other corner. Now, these stitches are extremely shallow. Okay, it's only like a thread or two. If you go too deep, the stitches will show more. I always go at least twice in the corner so that I know they stay together. If I was doing this inside like a grandmother's flower garden, I would actually... Um, do them where it's like three times because I really want those corners to stay shut and not open. And then believe it or not, 
I do I learned this from Sue Daly and I have another video on this also I'll put a link up above but it's called the knicker knot well she calls it the knicker knot it's actually a figure eight knot and you just go down one side and down the other and pull it and the like I said and you see the figure eight there it's a real nice picture of it but there's a video for you if you want to know how to do this but the really cool thing about the figure eight knot is i know that fishermen use it and it that it holds that knot so it will not come undone and that way i know that i'm not going to come undone in these stitches later so i i know it seems like a lot that i do an initial double back stitch there in the front in the in the corner because it probably won't come undone there but i always add that in now you're going to go really shallow okay and all we're going to do now i go from myself i go from this side's closest to me and i start here and i go through both you don't go through the paper remember this is shallow and do not go through the paper it will be very hard on your hands and hard on your needle and if you're doing this in a quilt you won't get the paper out so you want to stay away from the paper very shallow going through and I go from closest to me out and some people like to go this direction like outside in it's whatever's comfortable for you um I feel like I can't see going the other direction I feel like I have more control and I can see what in the world I am actually doing so that is the reason that I use or that I go this direction but like I said it's whatever you're comfortable with that's the bottom line okay and I'm also right-handed as you can see and so I go from right to left I've tried to go left to right it, you know like the way we read um, it my stitches look terrible and I'm not a great hand stitcher as it is so it, it but it's even worse but you know you go across I don't know about an eighth of an inch you, you just keep going across you just want to go all the way across to the other side and you want to make sure you go through both I think I grabbed too much of this side but that's okay um, you just want to make sure you're grabbing both fabrics very shallow and not hitting that paper okay only have a couple more here now because we're making a circle I'm actually going to end up cutting threads Um, at the end here because I got nowhere left to go so again I've made it to the corner so I'm gonna go through one corner come out the other Oop, that happens sometimes where it gets caught on your hexi I again I'm doing it twice and guess what guys I'm doing another knicker knot Thank you, Miss Sue Daly. Just going to make sure that I go There we go. Pull it through. Oop, got caught on my finger. all right then again like i said i go ahead and i'm going to cut threads okay and then i will do and i won't bore you through this but i will definitely do this on this last hexi and this hexi this last one you're going to want to stitch it to here and then you want to go ahead and stitch it on this other side now once all of these are connected it is okay to fold all of your hexes up so that you can get that last side 
together okay so I'm gonna get that done off camera and I'll be right back okay so I've got it done here and as you can see yes you can see those itty bitty stitches but it truly is not that big of a deal now I would have used a different color thread like I said before but I wanted you to be able to see this and what it means so I've got this one done and I've got this one done let me go ahead and give this a little focus there we go and now we're going to sew them together so the the wrong sides are going to go together okay and this is completely up to you what you want to do i am going to sew mine together from the inside first okay you could do the outside first if you like but I'm gonna go ahead and do mine on the insides, whatever you're most comfortable with, whatever you wanna do. And I've stuck my, I've, I've done a quilter's knot at the end here, and I've stuck my needle from the wrong side to the right side, just to get it started. Okay, pull that up. Now, I will tell you, you are going to see these stitches plain and simple we're sewing from the outside so you are going to see them it's part of how to make the ornaments if you match the thread great you're still going to see them if you don't match it try to pick something that's cute it'll make it look a little more homemade and you know add a little character possibly so I put the wrong sides together and I actually have a hard time working this is why I'm picking the inside because I wanted to oh, let me switch it around because it'll be easier for me all right put it through here okay so I've got them both together I've got them lined up as best as I can and I'll straighten as I go and you're basically, you're gonna do the same thing. And I am gonna do a uh, figure eight knot in a little bit. Okay, put it back through. I'll probably do it right here. You still don't wanna grab the paper, guys. And this is hard to do on camera, but I want you to be able to see Let me get this started. Get that down. Grab the other two. It'll clear up here just a second. Yep, that was my phone. I apologize. So, got these going. I'm going to go ahead and pull it through. Nice figure eight there. That's when I know I've done it right. And you could, you know, go back and forth with this. So you just want to sew them together. Actually, no, we're going to go around. I don't like this direction. I'm going to have to flip it again. Okay. Let's flip it around here. There we go. Because remember, I like to sew from where I can see. Yeah, it's much better. Okay. Pull it through. And you're just going to go all the way around. And at the end, I would do a little bit of a back stitch. And of course, you'll, you know, I'll do a figure eight stitch. But that's basically what you're going to do. You're just going to go all the way around. As soon as I get through this one hexy area, I'm going to show you um, what it looks like.
I might speed the camera up just a little. And if you noticed, I went the wrong direction because usually I go right to left and my stitches are showing that I'm going the opposite direction. So I'm probably going to cut threads here in a minute so I can go the other direction. But this is the stitch you're going to do. Around and around and around she goes until the entire center is stitched together. So I'm going to show you these stitches here. And like I said, I wouldn't use, personally, I wouldn't use these colors, but it's all up to your own preference. It's a beautiful thing. It's just an inspiration for you. All right. So I'm probably going to go ahead and cut threads here so I can go the other direction. So again, I will do a figure eight knot. This is another reason that I do the center first is because it's harder to me. And I like to get the hard stuff out. And we'll just pull it through. I'm just going to go back in real quick, do a little back stitch, and snip it. But that's what it's looking like. Not too, not too bad, and it would go much better if, in fact, um, I had the same color thread. I don't know if I can get this thing to float. There we go. So you're going to see them. They're on the outside. This isn't hidden in the seams, but you're going to go all the way around. And then once you're finished, we will come back and I'll show you the next step. Okay, so now what we're going to do, or now what you would do, is you're going to start to close this up. Now you don't have to put any kind of stuffing in it. And if you decide to, it's all about how much you really want to put in there. I will tell you though, if you stuff it pretty um, full, then some of the polyfill will come out a lot. So I'm just going to put in a little. But what I have done, and I, I have pulled my needle through, okay, and I actually went through in one of the folds so that the needle would stay underneath, or the knot, excuse me, and I've come out near the top of the red side, so I'm going to go through the back side right at that point, okay, and... <clears throat> I'm going to go back in and do it again. Now again, these stitches will show. I got to thinking about it as I was stitching this closed before I came back, because as you can see, it is all closed now. Um, if you really wanted to hide the stitches, you could do a ladder stitch. I don't have a video on that, but I know there are plenty of them on YouTube, and it will help seal this up without you seeing the stitches but I'm just I like that look um, especially when it's a nice color that complements <laughs> or you know it could like I said it can be striking it just it'll make it really cute but I'm actually gonna go ahead and do a really quick figure eight knot, or as Sue Daly calls it. Did I do that backwards? I did. Or as Sue Daly calls it, the knicker knot, which I think is just too fun. Okay. And I'm going to come all the way down 
I'll probably end up speeding this up a little bit until I get to the point where I'm going to start stuffing. Oop, taking a little bit too much. All right, remember, don't get the paper still. And the reason is, I know we left the paper in there, but it will lose its shape when you take the paper out. Hence why whenever you do a quilt, with, like, with a, like with a grandmother's flower garden, you leave the paper in until all sides of that hexagon are surrounded, and then you take the paper out. So... We are leaving the paper in to help keep its shape. It's kind of hard to do on camera, so bear with me, guys, um, so it can keep its shape. And like I said, you really don't even have to put any stuffing in it if you didn't want to. Now I am going to speed up until I get to the point where I'm going to start stuff. <music> okay, and just like before, and around this corner, you want to do a couple of really good stitches to help make sure that those corners stay closed. Okay. All right, now at this point, I am going to take a little bit of stuffing. That seems like a lot. Hold on. There we go. And just put a little bit of it in here. And what I'm doing, I'm going to have a little bit of bearding on here, but that's okay. I'm just going to stuff it inside here. And I'm going to try and keep this area clear of it. Just so that I don't uh, make it difficult for my needle or have more bearding, basically, than necessary. Okay. And if you really wanted to, you could get your purple thing. Help you stuff it down in there a little bit, keeping it keeping it clean for you. All right, that I can pull off later. But then, all I'm going to do is continue to sew this shut. And like I said, the amount of stuffing that you, you, you don't even have to use any if you don't want to, but the amount is up, totally up to you. How full you really want those pockets to be. But you just continue this all the way around. So I will sew this down, and once I get to here, I'll stuff this one. And I'll go all the way around. I'll come back at you near the end here. I'm going to finish this off camera so you don't have to sit here and watch me sew this together. So I will see you guys. It'll be just a bit for you. <laughs> so I'll see you all in just a little bit. Okay, so I've came and I've done all of these. I have two left, and the reason I stopped is because we're going to want to add something to hang our ribbon or our ornament with, right? Well, I'm going to use this ribbon. So the first thing I'm going to do is glue it to itself. Okay, get that on there. Get a nice glue in there. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some glue inside here. And this way when I get to it, I will, it will be dry because this stuff is, it dries pretty darn quick. Just want to try and get it centered a little bit. 
Okay, now that's how I'm doing it. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and stuff in here and continue to sew. And y'all know when I sew, and I got to thinking about something else too, I'm gonna share here in just a second, but you're gonna, you know, you, you basically go over the top, right? Well, you're not gonna be able to do that when you get to the ribbon. So basically, I'm just gonna go in one end. When it comes out the other side, I'm just gonna go back in on the same side, coming back towards the front. And I'll put a, probably about four stitches in there just so it stays anchored and closed. And then I will continue. I will stuff this side and finish it off. And we will have this part, the majority of our um, ornament finished but there is one more thing I want to talk about so I'm gonna go ahead and get this stuffed and closed up and I will then come back at you so I'll see you all in just a bit okay so I've got it all closed up I've got it all filled I've got my hanging apparatus here and I ended up doing three stitches going down and three stitches going up. So it ended up being six stitches all together. And yes, you can see some of my stitches, like I said. So that brings me to another idea. You know, sometimes in quilting, now this is not quilting, and I have said this before, and I'm gonna say it again. I am by no means an expert at hand stitching. It is one of my weaknesses. It needs more practice I need more time to do it and I just haven't yet so um, however sometimes in a quilt when you make a certain mistake sometimes it's good to embrace it and make it look like a design well I got to thinking about this thread so I'm using or 50 weight because that's what I typically sew with and even hand stitching and binding, I, I use the Orfil. It's it's nice and thin, and but it's still strong. So I got to thinking though, I'm going to embrace this. I'm going to do another one of these. Um, e this is perfect, just the way it is. And I know that um, if I give this to a family member, they're going to cherish it just as much as anything else that I've made for them. Um, it, it's cute it's absolutely cute but I'm going to embrace this and I know that Orofil makes thread that is 12 weight and 28 weight so they're much thicker I'm going to try it because I think it would be absolutely darling I think it would just give it a homemade feel and just be darling so I don't have any but I'm going to purchase some and I'm going to try it out one thing that's left out of this, in my opinion, you could just leave it just like this, but I think it needs a bow. Now these were the bows that we were able to find. I think it was at Michael's, um, so I can't sew it. <laughs> it's a little thick, so I'm going to ask my husband to hot glue it, and just to embellish, I mean isn't that cute? I just love this it's absolutely cute but you could also if you don't have a hot glue gun you could take your um, ribbon and make a little bow and this you could sew in absolutely could and it would be just as cute just as darling but that's the embellishment for this that I'm gonna do. But I wanted to show you a couple of examples up close while I'm here. When I talked about fussy cutting, now these are my mom's. My mom makes these every year. This is why I have so many of them. And she also sells them at craft shows. So when I talked about fussy cutting, she has obviously fussy cutted, is that a word? <laughs> um, the little snowmen and it turned out super cute and she just did a green background but isn't that just absolutely darling just darling just darling so there's fussy cutting on a snowman but you know you don't have to do snowmen you know if somebody has um, a Christmas tree with various ornaments or they collect different things like this one 
Uh, my my mother, my daughter, and I's favorite movie that we all grew up watching together was The Wizard of Oz. So she got this fabric, and again, fussy cut. Gotta love it. Super cute. Got the uh, yellow brick right on the back. But these are just some ideas for you. Uh, this was for my grandson, so her great grandson, and it is all about monsters isn't it cute it's so cute and mickey mouse has another favorite and here's a different kind of embellishment she still has her bow but then we also have a little snowflake to add to the middle isn't that just darling and on the back she's got some christmas along with mickey which is fussy cut again but then she's got some christmas fabric to make it really christmassy and with a nice little ribbon. I love that ribbon. But there's another idea. We've got U.S. Army. So if somebody is in a military service, you could definitely fussy cut flags and the name of their, um, you know, what, what they were a part of. But yeah, and then just do whatever color on the back to match. I'm pretty sure it was probably fussy cutted also because it matches this color. But isn't that just cute? But last but not least, you don't even have to do wreaths, okay? You could actually do, let me move that out of the way, a tree. So I went ahead and I cut out the hexes to show you how to do a tree. Here, let me do it like this. This will be easier for me. Whoop, got two here. There we go. Now I'm on track. Here we go. And I'll show you how you sew these together without sewing it so you don't have to go crazy with me on that one. It takes 10 of one color. They don't have to be green. Green's a tree. That's why I did green. And I, I will end up making this. So if I have it finished by later this afternoon, I'll show you the finished product. But you could absolutely do a Christmas tree and a little brown for the bottom. You could do it green too. It's whatever floats your boat. This is about inspiration to show you a little creativity. You'd make two of these. So this would be a front and then you do another one for a back. And again, when I would sew these together, what I would do is I'd sew th these two together I'd sew these three together and then I'd sew these four together and then I would go with my needle let's see and I would start here and stitch along here cut threads so these are sewn together so then I would add the next row and I would start here and sew along like this and get cut threads over here and then last but not least, start here, go up and down throughout. So you don't have to cut threads and then add the bottom, okay? So that's how I put it together. So you have two sides and then you sew the sides together. Give it some stuffing if you would like and seal her up. I would put the ribbon up here. Here's what I'm saying this. Um, my mom actually has shared with me a picture I haven't dug out my Christmas tree ornaments yet. I'm sure I have a tree in there somewhere. So she shared a picture, so I'm gonna share it here. And what I think is really cute, so her ribbon went up here, but what's so cute is she added the embellishments with the bells, so it kind of looks like Christmas bulbs. Oh my gosh, I'm telling you guys, these are not hard, they're fun to make, and they can be cherished as a homemade gift to your family, to your friends, to your quilty friends, to anybody that you want to share a little holiday joy even for yourself for this holiday make yourself a couple to put on your tree um, and I you know enjoy the process of being very creative I'd love to see pictures if you've made these or if in fact you make these we'd love to see that but I'll be back at you in just a minute isn't that fun I absolutely love these hexi ornaments and my mom makes them every year as i said before and they're never a disappointment they're just something to cherish it goes on my tree and it makes me think about her 
every single year when I get out the ornaments and start to hang them on the tree. I also got to thinking you could make them and to put them on your gifts as a little decoration on the box. Super darling, absolutely love it. But I gotta get this bow on and I gotta try and get this Christmas tree finished before today at 3 p.m. where I do my live on Facebook for anybody who wants to come along. Um, if you have any questions, it's a great place. I'll be there live to answer them for you. If you have any questions or comments now, don't hesitate to drop them down below. We'd love to hear from you. But that's it. That's our Hexi ornaments. Uh, that's this week's Christmas inspiration. I hope you enjoyed it. Give us a thumbs up if you did. And I will definitely see you next week when it's another Block Wednesday. So I look forward to seeing each and every one of you there. But until next time, may y'all continue to be inspired, productive, and joyful. And never stop making your dreams and quilting come true. Happy quilting, guys, and Merry Early Christmas.